can hear me. I was just giving my cat a little bit of love before we get started since I was a couple minutes early jumping on. How is everybody? Might have a little different noise level today. Uh, it's really hot in here so we're keeping the doors open as much as we can so that we can keep the airflow going. Hello Barb. Boot back to ya. Hey Janice. How's it going you guys? I'm excited for this one. I have no idea what colors I'm gonna use. I'm, yeah, I have no idea. Part of me wants to do a bigger version of this one. Cause I really like these colors and how they kind of glow and I think that could be really, really cool. Then the other part of me isn't sure at all. <laughs> Hey Cam, how you doing? Oh, I'm glad you're doing good, Janice. Hey Michelle, hey Diane. It's good to see you guys. Yeah, it's hot. It's hot right now. Thank goodness that we've got some uh, cloud cover happening right now, but it's it's still hazy and humid and muggy, all that wonderful stuff, right? So it's uh, it looks like it's gonna be a hot summer. Hey Cindy. Hey, Kathy. Thank you so much. This is a small, um, what size is this? An eight inch, eight inch maybe? An eight inch wood panel. Yeah, this one's an eight inch wood panel. And I, this was actually from one of the earlier tutorials that, um, that we did. This one was, I want to say this was within the, within the first five, um, <coughs> within the first five, I believe it was the walking dots tutorial. We did this part. And then the concentric circles, I think we did this part. Um, so part of me says to use colors like this again, because I really, 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 really like them. Um, and another part of me isn't 100% sure. So I'm just going to talk with you guys for a little bit. We're going to go through getting everything blocked out, getting our guidelines drawn on, all of that good stuff. And then see, I'm going to see what hits me by the end of that. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. Yeah, working on wood is wonderful, isn't it? I um I was lucky enough to get to collaborate with Funky Upbeat Designs. They take old um instruments and they completely transform them into works of art, beautiful works of art. And I got to paint a couple drums and a couple guitars for them. And they sent me wood that was sanded so soft, it felt like suede. And it was an absolute <laughs> dream to paint on. It actually broke my heart a little bit to paint on it because the wood was so gorgeous. <laughs> Five degrees outside and 22 inside. Yeah, right. You had some trouble getting in. That's weird. Oh, I'm glad you're here now, though, Sharon. Hey, Tabitha. How you doing? So, yeah, this was from one of the much earlier um, sets of tutorials. But these colors keep jumping out at me. How do you prep the wood panels? I just put a couple coats of paint, base coat paint. We use my craft acrylics from the dollar store. And I just put on... Uh, usually two or three coats. Three coats tends to work pretty well because it, can, especially if it's really thirsty wood. Um, but yeah, a couple coats of paint and you're good to go. Oh, that's awesome to have a friend that'll do that. That's really cool. Yeah, wood right now is ridiculously expensive, right? Last week, what did we do in the tutorial last week? Half petals, Janice. Hold on, I'll get the I'll get the piece that we started. Hi. Give Audrey a quick pat before she smacks me when I walk by. <clears throat> I've got it right here. So it was a new design for me too, Janice. I've never done anything with half petals, um, and this is what we did. We did the half petals, so looking more like pinwheels. So I'm uh, I'm going to be reworking some patterns and trying to figure out how to how I can use this pattern so that I like it a little bit more. We just kind of went with it and said, we're just going to try it and see what happens. If we don't like it, then we know for next time, right? So yeah, half petals was last week. I'm just going to catch up here. Good morning, Manon. 
Afternoon here, sorry. Yes, good evening to you. Not on wood. I haven't used gesso on wood. I use gesso on canvas, but I never have on wood. You can use a wood sealer or a multi-purpose sealer first. Yes, you can totally do that. And a lot of people do that with their stones too. They'll varnish the stone, then paint on it, and then varnish it again. Um, you can kind of do whatever you want with that. Well, I'm glad you're a little bit better, Tabitha, and I'm glad you're here. Let's have a good afternoon together, a good couple hours together of just relaxing and being in a nice, safe space where we can just chill and enjoy each other's company. Thank you, Vicki. That's kind of where I keep going, Cindy. I feel like repeating colors is a cop-out <laughs> right now. For me, I feel like I need to do something different. So... Hmm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Normally after I go past rainbows and the metallics, like the, the bronze and the brown and those metallics, I usually go to teals. Teals and blues and turquoises, and I usually throw in some gold and white there. And um, I'm not feeling that either today, honestly. I'm thinking I'm going to do a purple color grade. Yep, that felt good right away. So we're going to take some purples. We're going to mix a bunch of colors. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to use these purples. I've got a different plum that I'm going to use. Sorry for... Shoving my arm in your face. Uh, let's see here. This is the one I want, I think. This one? Yes. So I'm going to take this one. Now, I also have the option. So here, let's pick between purples, you guys. So we have the more bluey purple, really dark and rich, lighten that up to a whole bunch of different colors of purple. Oh, and you know what, even as I see it, that's the one I wanna do. This one's really nice too, it's more of the pinky purple. Okay, we're gonna go for that purple. I've n honestly never, ever, ever done a painting in this purple. This will be the first time I've ever used it, so we'll mix a bunch of colors for that. Thanks for letting me talk through that, you guys, that's awesome. All right, let's see here. Hey Elizabeth, I'm glad you're here. My page for my store is mandalaloveaffair.com uh, and I redid all of my links in my bio so it should be a little easier to sort through the different options in there too. Yeah, I totally feel it. What I'm thinking I might do is use all of the purples and then maybe go in with teals or blues for the top dots. I think that could be fun. Hello Carolyn. It's so good to see you guys. Hi, Chris. Oh, I'm so glad you're looking forward to this. This is so fun. Welcome. This is so fun, you guys. Uh, I am located, Kathy, about an hour and a half east of Toronto, Ontario. <clears throat> okay, Jan's turning off the comments. Good. Yes, please don't be afraid to do that. If you want to focus and concentrate and go into all of that, please do that. Um, I love that you're here. And if you have questions, you just pop on any time. I should prepare my surface last night instead of this morning. That's okay. Do you have a hair dryer, Tabitha? If you grab a hair dryer and just hold it about six to eight inches away from the surface and put it on kind of a low heat and just kind of sweep it back and forth, okay, uh, that should help it dry a little bit quicker. Okay, so I'm going to get into measuring this, you guys, so we can get started. I'm going to show you the tips and the tricks that, that I use um, to kind of try and make my life a little bit easier as I go through making these larger pieces. Um, the prep is the biggest part for sure um, as far as the guidelines because normally on a small piece, I just kind of go with it, right? I just kind of pick and choose as I go and kind of wing it. Now I still wing it quite a bit on these larger pieces. However, um, I don't wing it quite as much. I I know that there are certain elements that I'm going to want to add to larger pieces as I go. So I kind of plan for those, but I still 
don't get into too granular of a plan so that I have time, uh, have the ability to make some changes. So for example, I know that at some point, I'll get to the outside of this part of the piece and I'll want to add in at least one or some kind of set of rings, okay? So that's something that I prepare for. I wanna do my guidelines out as far as I can possibly get them. So let me show you what I'm going to be using. This is a 20 inch square canvas. There we go. A 20 inch square canvas. Hi everybody, sorry if I'm not answering the comments right away. I'm, I'm not really focused on the camera right now while I'm doing this, but I will come back and catch up, I promise. Oh, we might get Audrey with a case of the zoomies. What are you doing? Audrey, what are you doing? Oh, ears back and she's got crazy eyes. Oh no. Take your time, because we still have a little bit to go through right now, Tabitha, before we get started anyway, so don't stress. Thanks, guys. Okay, so this is a 20-inch canvas. Um, this is something I really, I'm completely selfish here because I really want to get back into doing large canvases, so I want to start practicing doing the large ones again, um, practicing with the planning, experimenting a little bit what I like, what I don't like, um, because I'd really, really, really like to do these more in the future. Um, so this is a 20 inch square canvas. I have a, um, a meter stick, yard stick for my American friends um, that I'm gonna use just because I don't want to have to try and connect up ruler lines of a smaller ruler. Okay, so the first thing that I do, I'm gonna sit down, I apologize, I won't see your comments right now because the phone is up above my head. The first thing that I do is I pick two different spots, close, fairly close to the edge, and the reason I do this is because I wanna lay my, my ruler down where I can see that I've got a pretty even band along the bottom so that I know that I'm staying straight. Right? And I'm actually going to line it up with 1 and 21 just to make my life a little easier so I have some overhang on the left hand side. So I've got my 20 inches measured out. I am now going to go in and I am going to mark my halfway mark down here. Okay, so there's my 10.5. 10.5, it's a 20 inch canvas, so it is 10 inches into the middle, but because I lined up with 1 and 21, I'm looking for halfway between one and 21, okay? <clears throat> then I'm going to turn this around. Now, there are canvases that you can get that will have more supports on the back, okay? If you had one like that, or if I had one like that, which I wish today, um, I'd be able to use a Lazy Susan to help it spin it around, okay? But because my Lazy Susan is smaller than the wood supports, it would just end up pushing up on the canvas. The other thing is, is if your canvas doesn't have this nice tight drum um, tightness to it, if it's saggy at all, if, it, if there's some fingerprints in it, like someone's pushed on it and it's gone through, you can fix that. Just spray the back of your canvas with some water or even take a wet paintbrush and brush the whole back with some water and let it dry and it'll tighten it right up for you, okay? Um, but it would definitely, um, you know, there's different, I guess, qualities or levels of canvases. If there was one that made ones this large that you could put some wood supports in or make some of your own, that, that's definitely something that I would like to do too. All right, so. Nope, that didn't work at all. Hang on. Ten. There we go. Okay, so I'm not worrying about this. I'm using watercolor pencil crayon for this. You can use charcoal pencil. You can use regular pencil if you like. You'll be able to get them all off. Some just come off a lot easier than others. I used to use charcoal pencil all the time and I freaking loved it. Um, but the pencils that I got, they wouldn't sharpen well. So I was like sharpening down to this long on a brand new pencil just because I couldn't get it to sharpen without breaking. Um, and my friend Jan introduced me to the wonderful world of um, watercolor watercolor pencil crayons. I feel like that one's off now too. Oop. All right, let me try this again. 
Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that one's off a bit too. All right. Yeah, I totally did it wrong. I shouldn't have gone to 10.5. I should have gone to 11. 11 is halfway between 1 and 21. Oh, for those of you who caught that and were calling me out in the comments, I got there. I promise I got there. <laughs> I'm sorry it took me so long to get there. Ugh. All right. <laughs> it is what it is. This is what would happen when I was by myself. So you guys might as well see what it's... This is just real life stuff, right? So I'm going to now join up these two spots, right? If I had just measured in the middle, it would be really easy for me to let my, um, my ruler kind of tilt to one way. So if I do a mark close to the edge there and a mark close to the edge there, I am going to get a straight line that's going to be significantly straighter, right? And then all I have to do is go in to the center and I apologize, my head is gonna get in the way here. So I'm looking at three, 23, and I'm gonna go in halfway here. Now, the reason I don't, I'll show you the other trick that I do. I, you could measure it out on the edges, like up at the top, just like we did for these ones, um, but I'm lazy, so I don't. So I measure it in the middle, and then I get my clear ruler. I love my clear ruler because I can line these lines up on the canvas to make sure that my line is nice and straight. So just the way that those little notches close to the edge helped me keep my first line super straight, making sure that this is exactly lined up with one of these measurement notches on this line is gonna help me to keep it straight so I don't have to mark off the two, the two ends. Now I am gonna have to extend this line, but I'm okay with it. Again, because I'm lazy and in my mind, it is easier to just go in and do this than it would be to try and get a non-clear meter stick to line up perfectly per perpendicular. Probably takes the same amount of time as it would have to mark both of the ends, but I don't care. This is how we're going, all right? How are we doing? Is everybody okay? Can everybody hear? Is everybody? Can't hear me when I walk away? Okay, sorry. I will keep that in mind. I will not walk away. Okay, sorry guys. Okay, let's keep going then. And I will stay here nice and close to the camera and talk louder when I'm not near it. So now I have my protractor that I'm gonna mark my angles. So I'm gonna line, there's lines on the protractor. Again, that's why I like the clear ones because you can see all the way through and line everything up with the guidelines you just did. Uh, so I am going to mark off, um, what should we do? Um, hang on, let me think. I'm trying to think when I do my stones, I do typically, Okay, so I want three slices of the pie. Actually, no, it's going to get bigger, so I'm going to mark down every 10 degrees, which would be here, or sorry, every 30 degrees. So I'm going to do from 90, I'm going to 60 and 30. No, nope, that's not what I wanted at all. Nope, sorry. I'm trying to think of the way to get the most number of slices in my pizza. So I now, I dip my finger in some water. So now I'm going to go in, sorry, and I'm going to do 45. And then I'm going to do half of 45 is 22.5. And then 10, 20, 1, 2.5. So 22.5, 45, and 67.5. So I just count in 22.5, 22.5. So the measurements get a little bit more specific than in any of the other projects that we've done up to this point. Right. Now the nice part is, is we only have to mark one half. One, two, five, and one thirty-five. We only have to mark one half, and the reason for that is, is that I've got from this line into the center point to help me make it good and centered. So as long as I'm lining, I have two points that I can line up, I'm going to be able to create a good line here. So I've got that all lined up. 
and it's not gonna ever be perfect and that's okay but we're gonna get it as close as we can and then we'll line up that one with the center this is where I have to force myself to take my time and just constantly moving the ruler around just a little bit to keep it as perfect as I can get it okay again with that line and my center uh, the other thing actually is uh, at this particular point while you're doing your guidelines make sure your pencil stays nice and sharp and if it gets too dull it's really easy to throw off everything so make sure you're keeping whatever you're marking with nice and sharp okay there we go next one Mine, just so you know, it doesn't go perfect corner to corner. I'm basing it all off of this, these lines that I've drawn, not the corner to corner of the canvas. The corner of the corner to canvas might, um, <clears throat> it might not be perfectly square. Okay, I will do my best uh, to speak louder when I'm bending over with my head down to get this stuff in here. Uh, and that's not the right measurement. All right, I'm chunky too, so when I bend over, my air supply is dramatically limited so I don't talk as loud. I got some stuff that gets in the way of the breathing sometimes. All right, there we go. All right, so now we've got the pieces of our pie. Everybody see those okay? Everyone can see that all right? So that is our starting point, okay? I'm gonna sit for a quick second. I'm gonna scroll through the comments real quick to see if there's any questions that I should be answering. I can't do a headset because then I have no power. And I need power, unfortunately. I'll have to look at that and see if there's uh, options. Okay, I'm glad you're there. Was I frozen? Is everybody okay? I can hear just fine. You're doing great. Okay, I'm, I'm really glad. Okay, good. Glad you got the better view. It's so hard to get a good view where I'm not in the way with the limited space that I have, right? So I'm trying to do the best I can. All right, so this is a trick that I've shown some of you guys before. When I'm going into the center of a canvas, I don't want the end of my compass to poke through or cause a dent in the middle. Okay, so what I do is I get a piece of cardstock and I draw these perpendicular lines on them. Okay, and then, and then I will be able to lay it down. And this helps me, it doesn't matter what size this is, these are very much not straight. It's again, it's all about the lines that you draw on here. Because then when I set it down on, and I'm going to lean in front of you again here for a second. When I set it down on my canvas, let me see if I can get this right above here to show you. So when I set this down on my canvas, I'm just looking to see when those line up. And then I move it to the right a bit so that this line lines up. And then I can push down. I've got a piece of tape on the back. I push it into the center. And now this is going to protect my canvas underneath with um from my compass okay all right now on to my most favorite part and my least favorite part i love drawing these circles i will add them to i uh, add some bluetooth headphones to my list for sure And if, uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll do my best to 
to get those as soon as I can. All right, so I've got a nice sharp pencil in my compass and I'm going to place my compass point tip down. Oh, and sorry, one thing that I also have on here, let me get a little closer and turn one of these lights off for a second. Let me turn this other one off too so that you can see this. Oh, oh showed better with that light on, didn't it? Okay, so do you guys see that I have tape on the top as well? I do that because it adds a little bit of a little extra give and I can almost create a divot right in the center for my compass so that it's less likely to slide out. So I just give it a pretty good push. It's not going to damage my anything underneath. It's just going to give that tape as that squishiness. I'm flattening down the tape to the cardstock to give myself a little bit of um, a spot to kind of sit. Okay, I hope you guys could see that okay. It's hard with the with the lights, with the glare, but I hope that that worked. All right, awesome, and sound is perfect. Fantastic. All right, so I'm gonna just start drawing my lines. Um, you can get as particular and specific with these lines as you want to, right? If you want to measure out you know, a quarter of an inch all the way out the line, one half a centimeter all the way out the line, and then line up your compass to do lines that are a specific distance apart. Absolutely. If you enjoy that part of the process, do not sacrifice that part of the process. Let yourself have that part of the process if you enjoy it. I don't enjoy it at this particular time. I have in the past, and I just don't right now. So I'm just going to draw... And I, and I honestly have found that unless you are working very specifically to stay within some sacred geometry and sacred measurements for these mandalas, it really doesn't impact things that much because you still have control over your design. However, I have seen a lot of artists do that. Look at sacred geometry and how everything is being laid out. Okay, um, I'm a taking a, I am taking a sacred geometry course very slowly making my way through it. Um, but I'll share everything I know and, and we'll definitely make that into a tutorial in the future as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw my circles. I'm gonna stop to sharpen my pencil as often as I need to so that these circles can be nice and crisp. If it makes you nervous that you are putting too much weight down in the center, if you're pressing too hard or you just feel uncomfortable with the amount of pressure, but you don't feel you'd have the control unless you push down, go ahead and put a small stack of paper, um, a small stack if you've got some business cards lying around, um, a thin book, anything under the center of your canvas so that when you push down on it to draw your circles, the canvas doesn't have as far to fall before it hits something solid. So it kind of give, can give you a little bit more support. Okay. So this is where it gets sticky. Once it starts to slide a bit more, I want to do this two-handed. And I'm going to stop and sharpen my pencil here in a second. Okay, so let me sharpen my pencil. We are getting to the point in this particular set of guidelines where my the, the width that my compass can go is going to come to its limit. Okay, so... This is where I was talking about it's my favorite part and my least favorite part because it drives me nuts that I can't find a compass that goes all the way around the edge. I've been begging all of my teacher friends, like if you ever see like in an old storage room, one of those huge chalk compasses that they used to have in school, please let me know. I want to find one so bad. In the meantime, I have been researching um, some different kinds of contractor tools and, and people that will make these things on their own. Um, the other option is if you're using wood or something that you can backfill a hole, you can always use a ruler like this that has a whole bunch of holes in it. I don't want to puncture my canvas to hold it there, and I, I'm not, oh, maybe that one would work. I guess a pencil fits right in there, so we can always try that. Oh, well, that's exciting. Look at that. We learned something new today together. I've never tried this before. I've been looking at strings and dowels and clips and everything. And shocker that I was making life more difficult than it needed to be. That's weird. That doesn't sound like me. 
Now I am limited to just these ones here, but at least I can get a couple more lines. And if I wanted to do like um, a bigger, if I wanted to do, I'm just pulling this tight. If I wanted to do like a, a much larger border around the edge, I can definitely use this. Maybe we'll do a couple more. Ooh. Who knew? The other thing I was going to suggest if you don't have a ruler like this is get a longer watercolor pencil crayon. Mine's super short. Adding length to your pencil will add width to your compass abilities. So there you go. And then I suppose I could do another one here, couldn't I? Let's see. Let's, no, that's too small. Okay. If you had a smaller pen or pencil or something, then that might work. But for me, that's not going to. But I'm okay with that. I'm okay with having these ones. And I am going to stretch my, um, my compass a little bit further by switching to my yellow pencil. It's also a watercolor pencil crayon. These come off very easily with an eraser um, or with um, a wet cotton swab because they just kind of dissolve. So I'm going to use this. And do this two-handed. Let's see if we can stretch one more out of it no. without it slipping. So again, I don't know if and when I'm going to use any of these larger circles, but I like to have them there so that I don't have to plan the entire design out before I get started. Oh, geez, I'm sliding all over the place. Look at that. That's a mess. That's a big old mess. This is the danger. Of stretching your compass too far. All right, and I'm going to go in with an eraser anyway. And I'm going to erase these other lines that I don't need anymore. That are the incorrect ones. And then I'm going to go over this entire piece very lightly with an eraser. The guidelines, if they are thick and waxy, they will distort your dots when you go to dot over top of them. They almost pinch the dot in from the side. So what I do to combat that is I just go over the whole darn thing with an eraser just very lightly not going to erase the whole line it's just going to get the waxiness off of there so just like one quick pass on each line with the eraser will make a big difference you might still have little bits here and there but for the most part this will help um, one thing that I didn't mention at the beginning or if I did I certainly didn't spend enough time on it is that if you are using a large canvas do yourself some huge favors and get yourself some gesso. Uh, gesso is going to help give you a much smoother surface to paint on. Um, and so it's like a primer almost for your canvas. I did put two coats of gesso on this yesterday. Um, they were supposed to dry for 24 hours in between coats, but because of who I am as a person, I forgot to do it until yesterday. So I got two coats yesterday, so we'll see how it holds up. Okay, so I'm still going to be able to see my guidelines again after this, you guys. It's just not going to be thick enough that it's going to impact. Those lines, uh, the dot shape, I should say. There we go. Okay, so I am literally just gonna 
wipe this down using a dry brush works too if you feel better about that rather than rubbing your hands on it it's totally up to you I just wipe it onto my table and then I will sit this aside and then wipe off the table now all right so those are gone and we're back how are we doing let me catch up on the comments here let's see how we're doing Thanks, Jan. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I really would love to get one. I, there's another artist, uh, her uh, 4100. Uh, she's a Mandela artist, and she does murals and stuff, and she sells one, but it's very expensive. And I'm not quite at the place where, excuse me, I want to spend 70 bucks on a compass yet. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I do. Uh, she tell that's what I do when I'm on wood. Uh, but on canvas, I don't want to puncture the middle of the canvas, right? but that's a really, really good idea. I have a lot of old squares, triangles, measuring devices. Oh, no way. That's so cool, Catherine. That'd be fun. They have 8 and 12-inch campuses? Awesome. Cool, Carolyn. I'll check it out. That's awesome. Yeah, you should totally play with those, Catherine. See, you might be able to do something fun. Thanks, guys. Okay, thanks, Jan. Did I add gesso, then add a coat of black paint? Yes, I did. So I did two coats of gesso and then one coat of black paint, and I went in and did a little touch-up. Um, the reason I didn't do two full coats of black paint is because um, I tend not to leave a ton of um, negative space, and anything that kind of comes through and shows through that I want to hide later Usually I have touch-ups to do anyway, so I'll go in with a really teeny tiny brush. Like for example, it's what this one is waiting for. I'm actually gonna go in and you know cover up all these little splotches, anywhere where the lines didn't come out, I'll go in with a really tiny little brush and cover all of that stuff up. So I kind of figure with the touch-ups and everything, one coat of black paint is okay. Now if you don't have gesso, you can use just black paint to do your prep but I'd recommend doing a good four coats. And that would definitely be something you want to let each coat, each, each coat dry for a couple hours in between. Um, acrylic paint looks dry really, really quickly, but if you add layer after layer after layer, eventually it starts to go gummy. Um, so make sure that you do let the layers dry fully in between, okay? And split the compass and put the pencil up to lock them. What? What are you talking about? This live will be available on my website uh, by end of date on Monday, or it is available on my Patreon. It will be available as part of the Patreon. All right, so now we have our guidelines done. It's time to mix some colors. So I'm going to move this out of the way for a minute and try and prop it up. And then um, I will grab myself some little paint pots. I did some cleaning, so I just gotta get them out of my bag. Now, when you are mixing paint for a larger project than this, um, it is not necessarily a bad thing to mix more color than you think you are going to need just to be on the safe side, right? Because the last thing you want to do is mix a bunch of custom colors and then run out. So um, I'm going to look and see what I have. So I only have those two empty ones. So what am I going to use? This is where I was not prepared today. Hmm. All right, give me two seconds because I think I have a couple. I've got these stinking little things everywhere. They're everywhere. All right, let's see what I can do in here. Hold, please. All right, so yeah, you want to be able to mix as many colors as you can. So I'm just going to find a couple little paint pots here that I can dump out that and give them a super quick clean. So sit tight for one second. I'm just going to get some warm water. I will be right back.
Sorry guys, like I said, this is not the most organized set of tutorials you're ever going to be a part of, but you're going to see how I function in real life, and even if it just means you might be a little kinder to yourself, that's a win in my books. Alright, so I'm just going to dump these little pots in here, we'll give them a little clean, some of them are nice and dry already, so that's fantastic, and I will use that one. I got it way too many lids. So I'm going to mix five different colors of this purple by adding, oh, do I wanna add some blue and some white or just some white? Um, when I'm mixing in white, this is the one time where I will recommend using Apple Barrel uh, just because it's inexpensive and it works good for mixing. Yeah, so um, it'll be available on my website. Um, it, they, they are available at a cost um, of $5 each um, for the tutorials or you as a part of the Patreon membership. Okay. But I think that um, now part of me is thinking I want to add some blue, but I'm going to kind of keep that in my back pocket because sometimes when it gets lighter, it goes a little too pastel and I might want it to look a little bit more of a, of a different transition, but we're gonna see what that looks like once we start getting it all mixed in. Now, white goes very far. I literally add like one or two drops of white at a time when I'm mixing white into my paints, uh, just because you can very quickly go too far and have too much paint mixed in that you don't, that's not the right color yet, and then you're looking for more pots and all of that good stuff, right? More places to put that paint. So keep that in the back of your heads that you want to be able to try and mix enough that you can get through your project and not have to remix, but not have too, too much excess, especially during the mixing process. That can be really, really frustrating. It was one of the most frustrating parts for me is when I would I would add too much white or too much black. Black is even more so. Um, when I would add the black to the paint, um, I would add too much of it and then I would have to start over again and I kept wasting paint and wasting time. Well, it's not a waste of time because it's learning, right? But still, didn't feel good. It wasn't something I wanted to do by any means. So it's worth taking the time to take your time in the process. Um, now this is the way that we're gonna mix these paints is the way you would do a color grade with anything. So maybe that's what we do. Maybe we do a color grade to blues. That could be fun. No, I think I still wanna do the color grade to light purple and then use the aquas for, um, Oh, oh, I'm stumped. What do you guys think? Hi, Molly. Molly's on Facebook. For those of you who know Molly from TikTok and Instagram, it's Mall Rocks. It's good to see you. Thanks for popping in. I am unprepared, so I am painting, I am rinsing out paint pots. Isn't that professional of me? I'm not happy with myself, you guys, if it means it, if it's worth anything. 
All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Just giving more time for your base coats to dry. <laughs> I'm going to break out the pipe cleaners in a minute because that gives me my last little bit to scratch off and clean off. They can usually help quite a bit. So that one's almost done. That lid is done. I'll have to dry this surface off, but that's okay too. Here, I've got a tea towel. I'll put that down. Putting my tea towel down to let these dry. Whoops. How would you guys do uh, make out doing your guidelines? Everybody okay? Yes. Um, I'm not using f uh, paint and flow troll. No, I'm using craft acrylic paints. I'm not using heavy body paints. I have only ever done that once and it is not part of my wheelhouse yet. So that is definitely not my area of expertise. I'm using just the craft acrylic paint straight out of the bottle. I'm a big fan of um, matte finishes as well. Um, and a lot of the heavy body paints that I've found anyway are, are, are gloss finish. So I'm... And the ones that I have now that I could practice with are a gloss or a satin finish. Um, and I just don't enjoy enjoy those. Um, so I want to wait until I can buy myself some good matte paints before really going too, too much further into it. You're doing great, Molly. Doing great. All right. Well, and if this little bit of teal gets in the paint, it gets in the paint. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Getting all the sound effects. All right. Almost done. And then we are going to mix five different colors of paint. Have a great day, Molly. Take care of yourself. So yeah, I don't do the mixing with the flow trial, not at this point yet anyway. Um, at some point, it is something that I want to explore, but it is not, not something that I'll be focusing on for a while yet. Plus, I have hundreds of dollars of this paint to use before I go buy a new stuff. All right, here we go. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate it. If we lost anybody, I totally don't blame you. I promise I will do a better job of preparing this sort of stuff for the next time and for future. Now these are the paints that I'm going to be using for the next couple of lives because this is not going to be just a one parter. This is we're gonna we're gonna go from how to get one started, which we're doing today, to um, kind of those in-between stages when you might lose some inspiration, you might lose some motivation, you might be like, oh my gosh, I need to be done with this. That happens. Don't beat yourself up if that happens when you're working on any piece, no matter what the size is. It's okay to put something down and come back to it. And, you know, I used to save all of the paint colors so that I had the option to go back to it. And then when I did, the paint colors had all dried up on me. And you know what? Half of the time I would look and go, eh, well, that's too bad. That's okay. And then I was totally fine with moving on and doing something different anyway. So be kind to yourself, especially with big projects. They are not usually a sit down and do everything in one sitting kind of idea, okay? Um, it takes a little bit more than that. All right. Did I? Aha, there is one more paint pot. I knew it. I'm like, I'm sure I did five. Five total. I was sure of it. And I did. That was just me again. All right, there we go. Number five. Number five is love. Did I just age myself by quoting Short Circuit? I think I probably did. <sighs> Ah. 
I'm excited for the mug painting party tonight, you guys. That's going to be fun. All right, so we have our five containers for paint. We have a stir stick. Whoops. We, all, we will have a stir stick. I dropped my tea towel while I was drying my hands. We have a stir stick. Okay. Right, that was a great movie. It was a great movie. I loved that movie. All right. Whatever happened to Steve Gutenberg? He's still around. Three men and a little lady. Three men and a baby. He was in that too, wasn't he? Okay, just taking a sip of my Pepsi. And we are going to keep moving. And start with paint. So, just giving it a really, really good shake. And this is a really dark one. It doesn't show up very well on, on the canvases, so I'm not going to start with just this one on its own. So what I'm gonna do though, is I am gonna fill the, a few of them up and just put a little bit less paint in each one. Because what I'm gonna be doing is the difference is going to be in white paint. All right, so this one I'm filling up to about, do you see how far from the top that is? Let me put this down here. <clears throat> see how far from the top that is? All right, so I've got that little bit from the top. Then the next one, I'm gonna have a bit more. And the next one, a bit less, and a bit less again. And a bit less again. Now, I'm not going to fill these other ones up here too quickly. Um, because I want to see how each of these turn out, right? So I'm still only going to add in just a few drops to this one on the left and give it a good stir and we'll see how she looks because I don't want to make it too light. Right, and it's going to take a little bit. I apologize if this is shaking the camera. I'm going to raise my arms up in hopes that I can when you're using these pots, if you have old crappy paint brushes, um, they're great for stirring in these pots because they'll pull the paint off of the side as well that these wood sticks won't do. Um, I've killed a bunch of the paint brushes, <laughs> my paint brushes too in that, but it works really, really well. So it is definitely, if you have a, a couple little sets like from a dollar store or something to do your stirring with, um, it can be really, really helpful. And, uh, inexpensive because you can always get a good three or four uses out of them okay so that just brightened it up just a little bit which is perfect I'm really really happy with that okay I thought I was referencing the rap artist that's amazing <laughs> oh I love that I love that still around yeah they do age well don't they he's a cutie Oh, sorry, I missed your question, Joni. These girls got you covered. Thank you guys for answering that. I need tiny little measuring cups. I have them for resin. I'll have to do that one day with uh, with the paints. So when I'm pouring this paint in, I'm counting a little bit. So for the first one, I counted to three. The second one, I counted to five. Now, because I know the difference between the two, right, the, the actual like three to five difference, because I didn't fill this up all the way, if I know that this three to five does well, then I'm going to feel pretty confident to go back in and add more purple so I can top this up, right, because I want it to be nice and full because we've got a big project over a couple of days. This is an opportunity, though, if you don't mix enough, don't panic as long as you still have your original colors and take your time and slowly, slowly, slowly add to it. And then what I do is I would take, like if I wanted to know if these two matched, I would take this one and I'd put just a little drop on that paint and I can see the difference. Can you see the difference between the two? You see that little dot there? 
So I can see that there is a, a color difference between those two paints. So you can do that until they match right up. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good color. So I'm actually gonna add a bit more purple and a bit more white. I'm gonna add a bit more white because I wanna fill this up nice and full and a bit more purple. A lot of it's just eyeballing. I don't use exact measurements. I just keep mixing until it gets to the, the way that I want it to be. But I like to have a good five colors. I'll probably use white in this as well as an accent too. Oops, except when they get full and then they topple over a little bit. This is again where the brush comes in handy. I'm so excited for when the art supply aisles at the dollar stores open up again here in Ontario so I can go in and get some more paint brushes. I've killed mine. Oops again with that. So that went a little bit too light. I didn't have, I added too much white and not enough of the dark. So here's the next trick that you can do. Well, I'm still stirring because I'm still, you can kind of watch the veins pop in there, but I'm going to dump a little bit into the next one just to clean this up a bit. And we'll put some more of the dark in there and this should do it. And then I wipe down the paint containers. I don't worry too much about paint spillage and everything. Be okay with being a little messy. It's part of the fun. And any bit that is still, if it's still too light, I can go ahead again and dump a little bit in here. Right? And then I'll just keep mixing. I'll do just a little bit more. I don't want to do too much more, but a little bit. Trial and error. That's why I don't follow any, any exact measurements because I want to pick and choose the differences between my colors, right? All right. So number two is done. So to compare the two, just a slight difference, right? So I'm going to clean this one off. <clears throat> I like getting messy. I like when my hands are covered in paint by the end of the day and there's splotches everywhere. So if you don't enjoy that part of it, uh, then you can definitely do this in a much cleaner way. I just like it. I like getting messy. Um, I wasn't planning on using silver, but that would be some nice bling, Catherine. All right. I see where you're going. Yep, I think that would be a good one. All right, I'll totally do that. Okay, I have another cloth here in the water, so I'm gonna have that ready to help me clean a little bit more. Hey, Rex, how you doing? Hey, Jen, it's good to see you. All right, so now we're going into the next one. So based on these ones, I now have a little bit more perspective, so I'm gonna add a bit more of the dark. And then I'm going to start adding some light, right? I still have a lot of room left in the pot. So I have time and space in the pot to adjust. I try to scrape the inside. You can see, let's see if I can get this here. You see all the striations in the paint? very satisfying to watch as it just changes color. Isn't that fun? So satisfying. Sorry about the shadow. It's because I've got my canvas leaning up underneath one of my lights. Let's see if I can bring this in a little bit closer. Let's go over here. See if that's a little bit better little bit. Okay, so now I want to compare. So this isn't light enough yet, so I'm going to add a little bit more lightness. All right, just doing your line template now. Perfect. Take your time. 
Are you looking for just general, uh, no, like the little tiny artist brushes? But yeah, just the, even just the, the plastic ones, right? Surface is finally dried and landline friendly. Turn on the AC. Oh, good. That's such good news. Yay for AC. All right. We open up in another week in a little bit. June 2nd, apparently. Adding a bit more white because it's not quite light enough yet. Compared to the one beside it. Can't wait to get back to painting in two more weeks. Yay, only two more weeks. How you feeling? I can't paint without getting it all over, right? Now it's the badge of honor. It's totally, totally why. Yeah, I'm lazy. I wipe my tools on my hand, but I love it. I love looking down when I'm, I heck out, go grocery shopping or whatever it is I'm doing later in the day and I see all the paint on my hands. I'm like, ah, oh, that feels good. I did something good for my soul today. All right, so there is that one. And we are good there now. So this tells me too, right? that this is nowhere near enough paint to go along with these three. And I actually think that this one needs a little bit more white. Sorry. Wasn't enough of a difference. When I was looking at it out of the corner of my eye, it just wasn't enough of a difference. So let's see if this makes it a little better. And there's times where I've just gone literally one drop at a time and mixed it in, and did it make enough of a change? Compare it to the other colors. Let it take you as long as it takes you, right? You wanna feel good about the colors that you're using, and if you're not pre-mixing colors and you're using them straight out of the bottle, that is an option too, right? And that's, there's, there's a lot to be said for that. It's definitely a much faster process. Okay, there we go, that's better. So now with this one, I'm going to fill up more purple again. And then we do a whole bunch of white. There we go. And let's see what happens with this one. Good overall, just bored, I bet. But I'm glad you're good uh, for the most part. I'm missing the dollar store much. I can't wait for it to reopen to non-essentials. I know. I know. I feel ya. We've opened all the way here. Oh, that's so good. I hope all goes well with the next phase of reopening here so that we don't have to keep going back and forth. You know, it's, it's at the point now where it's not that people have an issue with the lockdown. It's the fact that how many do we have to keep doing? Like, can we just do it once and, and take care of it and let it see that it works faster and longer term. But when they open it up too early, people are getting out and doing stuff. Right. And, and it's, <clears throat> and then when things aren't at a level where they should be for the reopening or, where you know the some of the medical professionals think it should be then we end up having to shut down again and it's just so frustrating it's like just pick one just pick one and be done with it right okay so that's not quite light enough i'm going to put a little bit more white in that one a little bit more yeah i get to get that peacock blue you're going to love working with it so much you're going to love it. All right. We're getting there. We're almost done mixing the paints. All right. There we go. It's going to be a very subtle difference. It's not going to be a super huge difference. But it's going to be enough. 
It'll be enough. All right, let's see if this one comes out the lightest. I love this part. <laughs> Isn't that satisfying? Like, look at those stripes. Isn't that cool? Sorry, I got zoned out there because it's so satisfying. <laughs> Oops, I'm dumping it again. Meh. And it is going to be lighter, so it's going to be perfect. I'm just going to try and scrape some more of the paint off the sides. And then I will clean off the side of the little paint pot in my hands. Whoop, shoot. Sugar. And I'll have to clear off my table, apparently, too. Because <laughs> I'm making a terrible mess. Okay, there we go. So we got our five colors. Move my stir stick. Wipe my hands. And wipe the table. And wipe this little goober. Sometimes it's nice to see the side of the paint pot too because look at how dark the side of the paint pot is. Let me pull this down. Look at how dark the side of the paint pot is so I haven't gotten all of the dark paint off of it yet. So I'm gonna give it another quick little stir. So I'm watching the size of the container, right? To make sure that I'm getting the paint off of there. It's not a huge deal by any stretch, but um, I have had it where little bits of color injection from the sides of the pot later on has changed the color just a tiny bit, but that must have meant that I did a really crappy job stirring, so this should be, this should be fine. All right, and then I'm gonna show you these five colors. I will use white, like I mentioned, um, and I will put that in the little paint pot here and I'm going to use my deco art acrylic paint from Dollarama for the white and that's easy I don't pre-mix it so I can just pour it into a container and not worry about it I've got silver paint already in another container so let me move this out of the way and this out of the way and that out of the way and we'll look at these colors. So, well, these five colors are this one, this one, and there we go. These ones have a very tiny difference between the, each, each other, but there's still enough of a difference that it will... Is there, though? Well, crap, now I'm thinking about it. All right, I'm going to put a little more dark in this one. All right, hold on. Trying this again. So I'm going to put a little bit more of the dark in there. Let me tell you, once you get your colors where you want them to be, though, it's very satisfying. So again, you could be doing this with any two colors, right? You could be doing this with green and yellow, blue and yellow, blue and green, pink and purple, teal and purple, teal and orange. You could you could do it with literally any two colors that you want um, and just mix that color gradient in between. So just keep that in the back of your minds, okay? That you can do this with anything you want. That's a little bit better. So totally lied. I'm going to do just a little bit more white in both of these. A little bit in there and a little bit in there. And then I might have to add a little bit more on the far end, but let's see. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, this is going to be much better. There. And then a little bit more there. Might be a bit noisy here for a second, guys. I think somebody's coming home. So the dogs are probably going to confirm that in a second. We shall see. We shall see. All right, so we got our five colors. We've got white, I've got silver on deck. Um, I'm guessing that what I will probably do is come back in with the silver at some point, but who knows, once we get going, who knows what's gonna happen. I'm gonna leave it out so that I can see it to make sure that as I'm going through the design, if it hops out at me, I'm gonna use it. All right. So now we are good to bring back our canvas again. How's everybody doing? We doing okay? Yeah, we're supposed to open June 2nd, so hopefully it'll be done soon. Is Alberta still, how long are you guys uh, locked down out there, Jen? Hello, Alejandra. It's good to see you. My baby's bachelor is resin specific. And it works great for that, by the way. I have done that, Carolyn, and it's really, really fun. It's really cool, especially if you do like a really cool big center dot or something. I think that's really neat. All right. Well, till the end of May, that's not too bad. Yeah, that's around the same time as us. We're June 2nd, so we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. Let me stand up and stretch for a second. Okay. So now I've got all the colors, right? I've got them all here. And now I can pick and choose how I wanna do this. So when you're using color grades or any kind of color mixture, you can choose to follow a specific order that you repeat the colors in, or you can just wing it. I've done both um, and they've all worked really well for me. So it is completely up to you what you um, prefer in that instance. Now, the last thing I'm going to do before I forget and to make my life a little bit easier on myself, I'm going to put one small circle in the middle where I'm not pressing down very hard with my compass. The smaller this circle is, when I put my dotting tool there in the middle, it's gonna be that much easier to make sure that it's as centered and as um, in the right spot as I can possibly get it to be. I'm gonna turn off this light because I feel like this one is a little bit better. How are we doing? Can you guys see okay? Is everything all right? I hope so. Okay, so I think I am going to start with the medium. Okay, so I'm taking off the the lids just so I can remember which one's which and I'm putting them actually off to the side here just so that I can um, put them in a bit of an order for myself. All right, and there we go. So I think for my center dot, I am going to use I'm not gonna use the darkest purple. I think I'm gonna use what would be like purple number three, the kind of middle purple. And I'm going to do a very, very large center dot on this one. Everybody can see girl? Okay, awesome. Thanks, loves. All right, so we're gonna come down in here and I am going to keep the camera up here, but I'm gonna zoom in and hopefully you'll be able to see. Okay, let me know if that loses quality or not. This is the part that is always the one that I find the most stressful <laughs> is getting this center dot in there. So I'm putting, I'm, when I'm dipping my tool in, I'm getting a lot of paint on there. Okay, it's coming up the sides quite a bit. Okay, I don't want it to be too much because I don't want it to drip, but then I'm going to hold it here. And what I'm looking for is, am I holding my tool about the same distance from this circle on all sides? And does it look like it's bisecting or covering up that center cross fairly well. 
and making sure that I put the tool down straight and not on an angle. Okay. So there is that. And there we go. So we got our center dot in there then. Okay, let me push that in there a little bit more. And we go here. All right, so we've got the center dot down. Fantastic. And now we can get started. So usually in the center of big pieces, um, I'll try and do like some color grade going out. I'll do a few rows of just, um, just the colors, but I almost always start with white. So it gives a really good color grade going out. So that's what we're gonna start with here. We're gonna start with white. Keeping in mind that you're probably going to want to turn your canvas a lot, okay? So keep that in mind because it's going to be difficult if you're using a big piece like I am here, right? So you want to make sure that you have a lot of space cleared, that you can be putting your tools back to wherever they need to be so that they're not rolling underneath your canvases or, or whatever you're as you're turning stuff around, it can be a little bit of a pain if you have some kind of cramped quarters, okay? So just keep that in mind. Now, I'm used to doing really small pieces where I would start with really tiny dots around the middle. Now, the problem with that on a large piece is that those can sometimes disappear. So the larger your piece, the larger your center dot and that's the first couple of rows around the center almost need to be. All right, there we go. Sorry, just had to take a drink. Okay, so I'm going to just take a quick look at my tools. And this is, again, where trial and error comes. In the very beginning of your piece, this is where it's going to be a slower bit of your process. So I'm starting with my DIY Mandala Stones tools. I'm starting with my number two. And I want to just see how does this work? How well does this work? I kind of like that size, actually. So I think that's the one I'm gonna go for. And on a larger piece, I do work with my guidelines a little bit more than I normally do, okay? But I am still gonna go into the center and dividing these spaces in half. Now I am getting some distortion from the canvas, okay? And that maybe that means I needed more coats of gesso on it. But it's still okay. I mean, it's it's still pretty. And I can always go in and touch those up at a later time if I want to. You want to get really particular about stuff. I've gone in before with the with a sewing pin to smooth out edges of dots, especially if there's just one or two that are really standing out, then you can totally do that. But be kind to yourself. Remind yourself why you're doing it. How perfect does it need to be? That sort of thing. This one is actually really bothering me because it's it's uh, one that I would like to get as close to perfect as I can, but that's okay. That's all right. We'll deal with it. We're we're okay. There we go. So there's our first center dots. Okay. Let me catch up on comments. If you have a piece of thin wood like panel or large canvas board, you could put it underneath your canvas to. Oh, that's a really good idea. Yeah, so even like the panel that I had earlier that I showed you from that other piece, whoops, sorry, I'm zoomed in really far. Like this panel, I could put this underneath this one if the if the depths were the same. This one's a lot thicker than my canvas. Um, so keep that in mind too. That can be a real big benefit for buying the artist canvas, the ones that are the, the thicker professional grade canvases that have the thicker um, thicker sides, okay? So this dot I'm not terribly happy with, which is why I'm going back in with my little pin to kind of get it nice and circular there. Okay, so how are we doing? It still looks pretty tiny, but in the grand scheme of things on a big piece like this, if I was to go with the tiny that I usually do, it would disappear and you wouldn't be able to see it from a distance. In the large pieces as well, that's the real challenge too, is using your negative space because you don't want to make it too, too busy. You don't want it to become overwhelming. You want the pattern to draw you in and you want to be able to um, 
you know, really see all of that and, and, and use lots of beautiful elements, but you don't want to make it too, too busy. So the bigger pieces are a great way to practice a little bit more minimalism. And I'm saying that very pointedly at myself because I do not do well keeping it simple. So this is really good practice for me too. So I'm going to start now and I'm going to go with all of my lightest colors. I'm going to go from lightest to darkest. Um, I might not even go to darkest. I might just go um, three, two or three rows, but we'll see. Um, now what I'm thinking now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the silver to come in after and do little tiny dots in between this white one to maybe bling it up a little bit and, and just add tiny little bits of sparkle that can, those tiny little bits of sparkle, they don't tend not to take away from the design. They just add that little bit so it's not going to make it too overwhelming. Yeah, I'm getting there. Bear with me. Why is that? Hang on. So let me go here. And let me go here. Okay, how's that? We good? How did you fix that dot? So I have a pencil that has a pin stuck into the end of it. Just like that. So then I just kind of went around the edges and just kind of almost drew with it a little bit and that smoothed out the edges. Okay. Hi, Claudia. It's good to see you. Thanks for joining us. I live about an hour and a half east of Toronto. Practically neighbors. All right. Any other questions before we keep going? Is everybody doing okay? I know that this is uh, a lot to just kind of bring it all in, but uh, I hope that everything's going okay. You stop me. If there's not, I will come back and answer more questions. Okay, so I'm going in with the lightest now. And this time I'm using a size 3 of the DIY Mandala Stones. And we're putting these in the spaces. I do every other one. Because then it helps me. To do my spacing. So then I go back and add in the ones in between. So this is about points of reference, right? When I am putting this dot over here, for example, right, the only points of reference I have are the white dots from the row before. But when I go to do this one in between, for example, I not only have the two white dots for reference, but I can also use the two purple dots, the purple dots on either side as reference. So it gives me four points of reference instead of just two. And that can really help with spacing. Okay. Oh, good. I'm glad you're doing good, Chris. Good stuff. All right. So we're going to keep going here. Normally I spin my pieces a lot more, but I, with in an effort to not completely make you feel sick to your stomach while you're watching this, I don't want to do that too much. But I do have to move the camera now for a second. Ah. There we go. All right, let's see how that works. I cannot see the comments at all, but I think it might be a better angle. For at least some of it. Okay, so I do every other one. And then I go back in. I'm used to dotting across for me, so this feels really, really weird. So I'm going to take my time. And then there we go. Like I could get a piece of an old piece of plywood that's nice and big and set that on top of my Lazy Susan. And that could help too. Um, like I said, putting a block underneath that can help uh, or the wood supports. But for now, we're not having the Lazy Susan. We're just jumping right in. So... Now we're going on to color number two, and I'm going to use size four of my DIY Mandala Stone. So I'm, you can see I'm just gradually getting larger as the colors are getting darker. Okay, using those points of reference, going every other one. And I have my guidelines as reference in the back too. Right, so I'm happy to see that most of my dots are hitting that guideline at about the same spot. I wouldn't panic if I wasn't, but it's sure gratifying when they do. 
okay? Filling every other one, and then going back in and filling in. The longer you hold your tool down, the more paint is gonna run off, especially if they're watery paints, okay? So just keep that in mind. That can change the size of your, your dot as well. All right, I think this is this part where I reach over the camera a little bit. I really need to study some of these other artists a little bit more and try to copy their camera angles. I've got the mug angle down pat, but the canvas one I'm not so on, on top of. The mug one I feel pretty good about, that I know where I need to set it to be able to see everything, but... Well, this is definitely going to take some practice to get back in the swing of this, this kind of stuff. Okay, so I've used two of my purple colors. Going out, I'm going to go and use number three. And I'm just going to check number three and number four to make sure I know for sure which one is the darker one. Okay, and I'm going to do another row. Um, actually, that's not true. Uh, or is it? <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to do another row. Another row of dots just like this, only this time I'm going to use a size 6. So I went from a 2, 3, 4, and now I'm skipping up to a 6 because the spaces are bigger there. So I'm going to use a 6. Okay, once I'm done this row, you guys, I'm going to move the camera and check on the comments and see if there's anything that I need to be answering for you, okay? If you're new to my lives and um, you have anybody in the comments that does answer you, um, they they know their answers and I promise they won't steer you wrong. And thank you to everybody who's helping each other out in the comments. I really, really appreciate it. This is where it can get meditative. You could just continue on with this particular pattern all the way to the outside if you wanted to. You can do this as much as you want, right? It is completely up to you when you decide to add different elements, like when do I wanna add in some swoops or some petals? Um, do I wanna keep going with this? Do I wanna add in a spiral? Like what, what do I want to do? You are 100% in charge. The worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna do something and you're going to say, crap, I wish I hadn't done that. Right? I don't like it as much as I thought I would. And that's okay. That's how you get clarity. Right? Can't know what you do want until you know what you don't want. Right? So be kind to yourself. Let yourself take your time throughout this process and enjoy it too. Right? This is the fun part. Um, yeah, the absolute worst thing that's going to happen is that you're going to say, no, I don't like it, and I don't like the piece anymore, and I don't want to do it, and I quit. That's okay. You can get a new piece and paint on that. It's totally okay, right? So now I think I'm going to do some swoops. I'm going to do a couple rows of swoops. Because I'm getting closer now to these other guidelines, I feel like I'm a little more comfortable to do some swoops. Now, what I have not done yet is done swoops on canvas with just the pull and drag technique. So let's give it a try. So I'm using one of my round. Oh, I promised I'd come back to comments. Let's do that first. Move the camera for a second and let's come back in. Looking good and juicy, eh? Yes, you definitely do, Claudia. I would say after every two or three dots maximum, you want to wipe your tool off. So I have um, a whole stack of old face claws and dish claws that I have, and then I'll just get um, wet one with warm water and keep that beside me and use that to clean off my tools. Really good question. Everybody's doing good? Everyone's all right? All right, fantastic. Okay, so... Let's keep going then. So I have this guideline that's here. You can barely see it, but it is there. See it more on this side, okay? That is the guideline I'm now going to use for some swoops, okay? So I'm going to try doing the dot and drag that I do on my mugs. 
Um, I have, and I've done it on some stones. I have not tried it yet on canvas, so I am not sure if this is going to work, but that's okay, because if it doesn't, we try something else. No problem. All right, let me see if I can zoom in any closer. All right, so I'm using a nail dotting stylus tool, one of the larger balls, and then I'm placing the dot here by this guideline. I'm holding it for a second, and then I'm very, very, very slowly bringing it down. Okay, does that help with that real time, you guys? So I put lots of paint on, I hold it down, let a lot of paint come onto the canvas, and then I slowly start bringing it down, okay? There's other ways of doing swoops. That pin that I had in the eraser that you guys saw, that's how I used to do swoops. I used to drop the dot of paint and then use the pin to pull it down, okay? So that works as well. This is, I'm still new to this technique. I'm getting more and more comfortable with it, but I also do it a lot of times every single day. So give yourself time to get used to this way of doing it. And as slow as you think you're going, slower okay yes you got to go super 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 slow now I have seen some people use it and pull the paint down a little bit first to help it travel farther so if I wanted to use this same size dot and do a swoop some from say out here I could pull that down a little bit to help the paint travel a little bit more um, but it's different than when it's just so nice and juicy it's so good to see you Christy I didn't know you were here hi love It's good to see you. I miss you. Christy and I you met through a, a mutual friend of ours, and we go to a lot of trivia nights together. There, so see how I'm just kind of pulling this down? Sorry. And then I go slow. That's another way to make your paint go a little bit further, okay, to just kind of pull it down. But it doesn't always work out exactly the way I want it, so I'm not super comfortable with it yet. I'd rather just go super slow. Uh, Christy and I met through a mutual friend and we do trivia uh, in downtown Toronto at a really cool pub there and it's it was just the thing it was the thing that we do uh, between that and going to some movies we started that for a little while and then that got shut down unfortunately fairly quickly with COVID obviously but that was the start of something else that we were doing we were going to the retro movie nights when you're late, you had a big nap. Good for you. Good. I'm glad you got some rest. Like so many of you, Christy is a badass mom. And I am so happy to hear that you're able to give yourself some time to rest. So see how slow... Okay. I'm almost counting and it's, I'm counting to eight. And I can go back to my guidelines here if I want to, but I'm, I'm okay with them being slightly off. So pulling it and dragging it a little bit, that just can make the process go a little bit faster, but I find it's easy for your hand to move and to distort the shape. So yeah, um, unless I wanna do a really, really long swoop with the same size, I would just go super, super duper slow. Because remember too that there's still paint on your tool, right? That goes up the top. So that's still going to start to come down and be able to be moved, right? <clears throat> All right, let's keep going. So what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna use the darkest purple and do another row of swoops from out here at this guideline. And then we'll do a row of concentric circle dots, like a, like a bit of a border on just above this guideline. So this guideline is gonna be important here. 
Everybody doing okay? If you have questions, you let me know, okay? But super duper duper slow. And I caught a hair. Caught a hair on the way down. Love it. All right, here we go. So yeah, we're gonna do another row of swoops after this one. And they are going to be big ones. So we're gonna just wing it and we're gonna see how it goes. See how it works. And I gotta grab my tweezers because there's another hair right here. Did you guys see that? There we go. Got it. Got it. You did too, Rex? Good, I'm glad. How you doing, Rex? You doing okay? Oops, there's a hair still stuck on there. Try again. So these large pieces like this can take anywhere from 8 to 20 hours to make depending on what you're what you're adding in what kind of detail all of that sort of stuff and that's not include drying time right you're going to get to the spot eventually where you kind of can't proceed until some spots have been dried so uh, you have to be able to give yourself that time to leave it and come back to it a bit right yeah, I. that's the worst when you get like the little twitches and stuff and it moves everything there. It's frustrating. So make them smaller or maybe that would be a much um, more comfortable option for you to use the pen, right? Uh, to use the pin in, in the pencil eraser. So let me just show you that one. So I'm going to hold this paint right here for quite a bit to get as much off the tool as I can. Okay. And sometimes there's lots of surfaces where this is still the best option. So again, I have a sewing pin stuck in the end of uh, a pencil eraser so I can hold it as a pencil and not uh, activate the carpal tunnel. And I'm just going to start dragging that down. If going super slow causes you to shake, uh, twi get twitchy, any of that sort of stuff, you don't have to do that, right? Because there we've got a swoop as well. And it actually gives you a little bit more control. You're relying on, you know, drawing the shapes in a little bit. <clears throat> Glad you're hanging in there, Rex. We love ya. Oh, there's another hair. I can always tell when I pull the paint, pull the tool out of the paint, because it gets all, I can see the hair get coiled right back up. So yeah, if the you get a sewing pin, put it into the end of a pencil eraser. And that will work for you just as well and give you a ton of precision. So listen to your body and listen to whether you're enjoying it or whether it's frustrating for you. If it's frustrating, don't do it yet or try a different way to do it. Right? The practice is not going to get easier if you are frustrated. That I guarantee you. Those are the days where we learn the lesson of, okay, so I'm not supposed to do this today, so let's find something else and we'll come back again. But that might be a good option for you, Barb, because I can totally understand how when you're, especially when you're going super, super slow, right? Okay, here we go. Ziggy swoops, totally, right? Um, just don't use white paint because I have been told before that my squiggly um, swoops look like sperm. So, yeah, there you go. Family-friendly tutorial right there. <laughs> I did a paint pour yesterday in my shower so I didn't get cat hair and dust in it. That's brilliant. Acrylic paint comes... Oh, that's amazing. How did it turn out? Do you love it? All right, let's try this. All right, so let's see. I'm using a larger tool again. So the one that I just used, I put it away and I don't know. Okay, so this was the size that I just used on the left 
and this is the size that I'm going to do for these significantly longer ones, okay? A fertility design, right? <gasps> Barb, there's your art career right there. Make squiggly swoops and sell them to all kinds of fertility clinics right there. You're, you, got the, you got the artwork for the fertility clinics. Every OBGYN's office will have your swoops. <laughs> That's how else you're going to get baby swoops. <laughs> It's the prairies. <laughs> Don't like it at all. You're going to read you. How hard is it to read you? Do you have to let that one dry or do you have to um, abandon that piece entirely and just do it again? Or can you pour over top of it? So interesting. All right, let's give this a shot. We're going to see if this paint will travel far enough down. These are the kind of experiments you got to be okay with doing, right? So what I'm doing is I'm holding my tool in here and I'm giving it a really good stir with my tool so that I can almost scoop up paint as opposed to just dipping. I want to scoop and carry as much paint as I can. So I'm going out near that guideline. This might be where we need to do some of this little dragging. Looks like it's going to travel and it did. Yay. I love it. Love it. All right. Let's keep going. So I'm doing a little bit of the dragging and now I'm just going super duper slow again. I'd like to do one that's a whole bunch of swoops and try and make it look like fireworks. I think that would be really fun. I've been watching a lot of graffiti artists and how they're making things look like they're glowing neon signs. And I'd like to try that too, make it look like the mandala is glowing. Like a neon sign, I think that would be super fun. There we go. So let me see. Scrape off when wet, it was a wood TV tray. Oh, that would have been really satisfying. <laughs> Uh, do you life the tool, lift the tool while uh, you drag or are you making contact with, um, I'm putting a little less pressure on it. Um, I'm not putting a lot of pressure because what can actually happen is when you put a lot of pressure on the tool while you're dragging, as it dries, you'll start to see almost a line show up in the middle of your paint. It creates a bit of a crease. Okay, so you want to do it all very, very lightly whenever possible. Yes, yeah, kind of cool, eh, Jan? This is fun. This is You don't usually have this kind of space on the smaller pieces to kind of experiment and play around with stuff. I'm excited. So just a slight, like I'm barely touching the surface. So see how that one was a completely different shape and the paint traveled completely differently? Right, because I pulled it down from the top, so it had a little bit more, a little bit more tooth to it. So it's a fatter swoop there. Okay, let me get this where you can see it. You're welcome, my dear. All right. And for anybody who is on here, um, I just want to thank you again. Um, for the lovely gift that you gave me for the Jason Mraz concert. It was spectacular. It was quite literally life-changing. It was a spiritual experience. It was everything I hoped and wanted it and needed it to be. It was absolutely amazing. So thank you again, you guys. So I'm feel I'm that's a, it was a good question Christy because I've never really thought of it as I was doing the swoop I'm probably pushing down a little bit harder at the top of the swoop and then when I get closer to the bottom I tend to lift the pressure up a little bit Yeah it was delightful Absolutely delightful 
I was out in a little tent gazebo out in the backyard and just, oh, that one was terrible. Ugh. Okay, so I'm gonna redo this one. So this is a good time to talk about this. I've got some of these tools that have these silicone brushes on the end and they help me pull paint off. So when you're using a black background, it can be very forgiving because it's very easy to fix quote unquote mistakes. So I'm gonna pull this paint off while it's wet. I just wanna be able to make this process as quick as I can. So that's why I'm pulling paint off. And I want it to remain as flat of a surface as I can. If I don't pull the paint off and just paint back over it with black, I'm gonna have that raised swoop now that I'm gonna to have to paint over top of. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, um, I just pull that off. These are clay sculpture tools that I got from Amazon that have these silicone brushes. They're all different shapes. Okay, but they work really, really well to help pull paint off. Okay. And then I'm going back in with just a small brush with my base color and just painting over top. And then I'm gonna keep going with the other swoops. And by the time I am done with the other swoops, this should be pretty darn close to dry. And then I can come back in here or I can get started on the next row and then just come back here whenever this is dry. So that is how you fix mistakes. Now, if you don't have the tools, obviously, that have the silicone brushes, there's lots of different things you can use. You can use a cotton swab, you can use a piece of tissue, you can do anything that you, you, that you have kind of handy to help you pull that paint off and make it a nice flat surface again for your base coat to go on. Ah, I was one step ahead of you, Claudia, fantastic. So for those of you who don't already know, um, tonight is my first mug painting party. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see how it goes and to see what we come up with as far as ideas because I am going to be asking for feedback at the end of this one. I've got some ideas for the plans that I want to use going forward, um, but I definitely want to hear what everybody thinks after tonight. Um, but expect to see a lot more of these on the horizon. I will be doing more of them, guaranteed. Oh, I did it again. That's what happens when I lift it. When I lift it, as soon as I lift the tool, that's the problem. Okay, so try not to lift your tool. That usually means that I didn't put enough paint on it. So anyways, yeah, tonight from 7 until 9 Eastern is the first mug painting party. It is a paid event, um, and they will be paid events going forward. Eventually, I would like to switch them to Zoom, um, but for now, we're just going to use Facebook. Uh, but yeah, eventually, I would like to get them onto Zoom to um, just make it a little bit easier and a little bit more interactive, all of that good stuff, so we will play that by ear. So for tonight though, we're gonna be painting a mug. I'm gonna walk you through step by step a very specific pattern. And yeah, it doesn't matter what color paint you have, doesn't matter what color mug you have. This pattern is gonna work for anything that you've got. If you don't have a mug, you can paint on a glass or a vase, anything like that will work. Uh, the only thing is that you need to have, without a doubt, is multi-surface acrylic paints. Okay, so you need those multi-surface acrylic paints because they are the ones that will adhere to ceramic or glass. They are gonna cure on after baking. So all of those paints are going to have different baking instructions for curing. Uh, multi-surface paints will cure to be top shelf dishwasher safe after baking. Um, and they will after air drying as well, but the air drying takes 21 days to fully cure. So if you are like me and you don't have time for that and you're not patient enough for that, then <laughs> baking is the good option. They're not all created equal, so just make sure that you read your bottles and know for sure um, what the recommendations for your paints are. So for as far as tonight's paint party though, the most that you need is or the minimum that you need is um one color okay because i'm going to be using one base color and then i will talk about top dots as well on that piece um but yeah 
It's going to be fun, and there are going to definitely be lots more coming in the future. This is the first of many. And maybe even different things, too. Maybe someday we'll do a vase painting party. Maybe someday we'll do stone painting parties. Like, we could do anything we wanted. Okay, so I'm just going to catch up on comments here really quickly. So this is where we're at so far. Okay, I've got to go in and fix those, too. But otherwise, I think it's looking pretty good so far. How are you guys making out? I think this is going to look really cool. Oh, uh, the mug painting uh, live at a later time. Uh, if you purchase a ticket for it, it will be available for 24 hours. I recommend Google Meet. No time limits, interactive, and very user. Is, are there limits of um, the number of people you can have on there, Chris? Oh, cool. All right. I will definitely look at that then. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, maybe one day we can finish that. I'm almost out of that paint too, so I need to pick it up again. So I'll put that on the list. Maybe I'll even work on that a bit next week. Maybe that'll be for lives. Not as many as you like. As many as you like, really. I thought you said not as many. Oh, that is very cool. Okay, cool, Chris. Thank you. I will definitely ask for help because I want to take a look. Michelle, I'm totally off the script. I wanted rainbow colors. So picture this design now, right? When we're looking at this huge piece and imagine doing it in rainbow colors. Like you would be on red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. You'd probably have, you could throw in a teal and a pink. I usually do between the green and the blue, I throw in a teal. And then after the purple for rainbow, I throw in a pink. But imagine all of that so far and then just repeating that over and over again as you get towards the edges. So it's, it feels like a fairly big design. We're, we're, we're at a good three and a half inches so far, but we still have a lot of canvas, right? Yeah, we'll totally have to do a rainbow one too. That'll definitely be on the list. Okay, so it's 252. Okay, what I'd like to do before we sign off for today is I want to get started a little bit on the row that is going to go around here to show you how I space that out. Okay, so remember how I talked about how when you get to the end of the design, then you can put circles like this in there? Yeah, like imagine this, but on this. Oh, that'd be a trip and a half, wouldn't it? Anyways, okay, so um, what I'd like to do is show you how to lay down the dots for spacing so you can use any size tool that you want. You, there, you don't have to try and figure out what the magic number of dots is that's going to fit in one of those circles. That can get you started so that if you want to keep working on your piece before next week, because next week is going to be part two, where I'm going to build on this and get it almost done. And then the third part is going to be the final finishes, removing guidelines, and varnishing. Okay, so that's the plan for the next few weeks for tutorials. But I'd like excuse me, I'd like to get at least a few of the dots to go through the concept of creating that circle um, to be able to show you how I do that. So you, like I said, you can use any tool and you don't have to go, oh, geez, I hope that I can fit the dots and they'll look good all the way around. Okay. Take care, Carolyn. It was good seeing you. All right. So that's my thought. Um, I'm going to still leave those because they're not dry yet, but we're going to start by laying down some dots for that first row. Now I'm going to go back to the lightest purple. Am I? No, we are not going to do that. I'm going to go to the, this one. Still practicing swoops, I'm getting better. Just keep practicing. And as long as it's fun, make sure that it's fun. The moment that it's not fun, walk away. Give yourself a break. Swoops will not get better if you push through and persevere. Right? Keep practicing, yes, but practice because you want to be able to do them well. And it's fun to learn how to do them. Right? But be nice to yourself, please. All right, so I'm going to start with a fairly small dot going all the way around. I think I'm going to start with a size 5, actually. A size 5 is uh, the same. Oh, no, 2, 3, 4. So that was a 4. 
Um, I think I'm gonna start with a four then, because I think that was a good size. I like being able to reference back to somewhere in an earlier part of the piece to be able to kind of see where I wanna go. All right, here we go. So working on this first circle, I'm gonna use this guideline. Hopefully you can see it there. So this guideline that you see in around here, I'm gonna use that for my guideline for this circle. I'm gonna try and make this big enough, but still be in a little bit. Oh, it does look like a dahlia. <gasps> Oh, I love that, Christy. Oh, I'm glad you're having fun, Michelle, that's wonderful. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put the dot just to the side. I'm not gonna put it so that the, the, the line goes right through it. I'm gonna put it just to the, the outside. Okay, bye Rex, lots of love. And I'm going to start by doing 12 o'clock. This is gonna be very familiar to a lot of you. Six o'clock, three o'clock, and nine o'clock, okay? Now, I'm gonna go in and do the half ones. Now we have guidelines here. Let them help you. Let the guidelines help you here, okay? At least with dividing a couple of the spaces while the spaces are still fairly large, okay? These are almost dry. I think I'm almost able to get in there and do redo those swoops. Okay, so now that we're here, right, we've got those first few lines, those few, first few dots down. Now I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna start to go and divide these ones in half. Again, we've got the guidelines, let's use them. If your guidelines are not lining up with this, don't panic <clears throat> and look at what is the space that is halfway between these two dots on the side, okay? That's where you wanna be. Okay, I'm gonna move over here a bit and we'll do it here and we'll do it here, okay? And then we will come up here and we'll do this one. And we'll do this one. Okay, so now, because my space is um, dry, I am gonna go in and finish that, but now what you can do to keep going with this circle is just literally divide the space in half again. Right? Divide it in half. And every time you do this, you can assess can I fit another dot in between these two, right? So I laid a dot, can I fit another dot in between there? Yes, I can. The worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna try it and it's not gonna fit and then you pull the paint off and redo with a different size tool. That's going to work. You can make a circle that has all of the same size dots. The difference is, is how, much, how big is the space in between those dots going to be, okay? but you can use any size that you want for these. Okay, oh, and then there's one more up top here. And there we go. Okay, and now the final one, I'm gonna go and divide each of these spaces in half. And I'm going to have this little open space because I have to go in and redo those swoops. Does this make sense, you guys? So start with your two points and then just continually divide the space that's left behind in half. And then divide in half again and divide in half again until you can't fit any more dots in between or until you have the space that you want in between those dots. Like if you wanted this to be a tighter fit, then you could pull this off and go up a size. And you can always try just a few of them, right? Like you could put a couple guidelines down or you've got your guidelines down, put a couple of dots down and just do one section to see how tight they fit in together. You don't have to wait until the whole end of the process. Okay, you can do a test to see how it's gonna work and if you like the way that it's gonna look.
right? This is very different than being able to spin it. Right, and here we go. How are we doing? Is this making sense, you guys? Right? See how we're doing? Okay, so now I'm going to close up this paint for a second and I'm gonna go back to my super dark purple to do those swoops that are missing in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in again. Let me actually get down nice and close here. There we go. And, all right, two more big swoops. So after today, if you want to keep going with whatever you're working on, please keep going. Do not stop just because the tutorial has stopped. There are no mistakes that can be made here, right? Next week is just, we're sitting and painting together and we'll talk about tips and tricks and everything, but it's gonna be pretty, it's gonna be pretty straightforward next week. We're not really gonna be learning a ton of new things except for, hey, this is how I'm dealing with the large piece. This is what I like, this is what I don't like, and let's talk through all of that. So if you wanna keep going and have more done for next week, please, do it and enjoy it, okay? And I'm gonna finish off this row and then that'll be it for us for today. And if, I'll, if I see you at the mug party tonight, I will look forward to seeing you. I'm looking forward to it, I think it's gonna be fun. If you are not already coming to the mug party and you are interested in it, there is details in the events section of my Facebook page. Tonight is $6.99 uh, because it's my first one. It's the test one. I'm going to want a lot of feedback. I'm going to need a lot of feedback to make sure that I'm kind of going in the right direction. Um, and then going forward, these uh, mug painting parties are going to be $20. At this particular time, the recordings of these are not part of my Patreon. Uh, they might end up being another tier at some point. Um, but at this point, these are strictly the mug painting parties and, and that's it. Um, now, Facebook does tell me that the fa paid Facebook events are available for 24 hours after the live. Um, I have no idea how that happens. This is going to be... Uh, a potential issue tonight because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm learning, right? So just keep that in mind. But going forward, if there is a way to do it and I can figure it out, I will make sure that it gets done. Okay. Oh, really? Huh. That's very different. Okay, I will take a look, Alejandra, because I, I, I don't know why that's happening. I will take a look. Bye, Michelle. Take care. Thanks, guys. I'll pull back so you can see this here in a little bit. I'll have a look at that, Alejandra. I'm not sure what that's about, so I'll take a peek. Uh, is it different to get on the paid event? Um, uh, it'll just take you through it when you click on accepting the event, I believe. Within Facebook, it'll take you through, um, it'll take you through uh, the payment process and everything, and get you logged into the event and and get you a ticket for it or get you a spot saved, I guess. All right, so this is where we're at so far, folks. Okay, looks kind of cool. We'll add in some more detail as the time goes on. I'm just gonna get the base down. I might even do a little bit more before uh, our next tutorial as well, just to fill it in a little bit. Otherwise we might be doing four parts, but um, we'll just keep going. And um, you could put in more of these rows if you want to. You could leave it at one and start putting in bases to do a bunch of petals. Um, it's completely up to you. You could do a whole bunch of swoops going out from here. Play around with it and see what you like.
Okay. Please message me about Google if you're interested. I'm happy to share all the knowledge I've learned over uh, this past year. Thank you so much, Chris. I really, really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. I'm sure I will have questions for sure. Thank you, guys. I'm so glad you like it. So again, imagine, though, as we fill this out and make this into one large piece, it's going to be pretty cool, I think. And when we start adding in all the little details and the ways to punch things up and make it look kind of supernatural and throw in some teal or some blue top dots on all of this, too. Oh, it's going to be delicious. Absolutely delicious. So if you have any questions at all, please let me know. Uh, if I'm going to see you tonight, I'm looking forward to it. If not, that's okay. There's going to be lots more of these mug painting parties where this one came from, and we will do it again another time. Uh, part two of this one next Saturday from one to three. Um, I loaded, um, I restocked my website today with two more planters, a new pendant, and eight new mugs. Um, so if you uh, know anybody who is looking for a great gift idea, then and, and you don't mind sharing my stuff with them, that would be awesome. And um, something new that I did implement is I um, set myself up a tip jar. You know, my intention with doing these tutorials was always to say, you know, these are always free to attend. Um, any tips are welcome, but certainly not necessary. And if anybody tips $5 or more, I'll send you an, um, a copy of the recording. So in the link in my bio now, there is a tip jar set up in there. So this is also me practicing telling you about it because it's an incredibly uncomfortable experience to do. So I'm practicing and it's, and it's there. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I'm looking forward to next week to do more on this already. And I will see you later tonight. And the live schedule for the next week will be put up on TikTok tomorrow. Lots of love, you guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.